to start off with some basic physics under the assumption that some of the viewers have never seen physics in use in animation. So we're going to start off with some things that some of you already know. But there's a lot of people that don't understand that physics is more than just a toy. It is actually a tool. So I'm going to go ahead and just load a standard primitive box. And I'm going to move that box up off the ground plane, which I've turned the grid to black, so hopefully you'll be able to see it a little better. Get some distance. Raise this up a little more. And if we were to press play now, nothing would happen because the physics engine is enabled, but we don't have a physics enabled object. This up here actually runs the rigid body simulation, which is the physics engine for all hard bodies. This is the soft cloth or soft body simulation. This particular one turns on your object physics settings. So as soon as we activate physics for this block, it will automatically default to dynamic, which means it's going to interact as though the laws of physics applied to it. Instead of just staying in the air, it's going to drop. Now, if we actually did want that to stay in place, we could use static. And over time, we'll go over all of these and things. And that way, it holds it in place. But before we go any further, I also want to take a look at uh, different bounding types. So I'm going to create another camera. And we're just going to zoom into the box. And hopefully you can see the red square, or the red uh, outline. And that is actually the bounding type. Now, it does not matter what the shape of this primitive is, or what the shape of your object is. It is the shape of the bounding type that interacts with physics. So you can have a sphere here as a primitive, but if it has a box bound type, when it hits something, it's going to act like a box, not a sphere. So if you wanted to do that, you would have to change it to sphere which will actually have a small sphere inside this, a small red sphere. Cylinders, you can see the cylinders running this way across the screen from left to right. Get a little more, you can see the top of it there. And also we'll stretch it out a little where you can see how, how this changes. Like the cylinder can be changed in orientation to where it will actually go this way. And these corners aren't going to mean a thing because when it interacts with other blocks just like this, it's going to actually interact as a cylinder. Capsule is the same way. Uh, capsule is actually what, what we use in rag dolls and things like that. Convex hull pretty much mimics the hull. And then, of course, there is self-mesh. Uh, basically, though, we're just going to use a standard box with standard bound types. So, let's go back. Add another box, and remember, we have to turn on our physics. And one more thing to keep in mind is the real-time versus by frame. It is best to go ahead and use by frame unless it's just incredibly slow, because you're not going to get a good simulation in real-time. That's the reason the by frame is there. Now, in very simple setups, it may not make a difference. Another thing to remember, too, is you don't have to do an entire simulation all at one time. If there are several components to the simulation, do it one at a time. And as we go along through these uh, physics segments, we'll go over things like that. Now, if we wanted to have something for this to interact with, like a floor, we're going to go over here to the physics props provided by Realusion, and we're going to put in infinite plane or floor, because they're physics enabled. The infinite plane is a dummy, so as long as it's set as dummy, it won't render. And now there's actually something for the physics enabled box to interact with. But now remember, the interaction is only going to be limited to what type of bounding box it has. And sometimes it'll make a difference, sometimes it won't. It depends on how complex what you're doing is. As you can see, that did totally change the simulation. It didn't roll, but if you would have had an inclined plane instead of a flat floor, it very well might have rolled. So there's already a difference in just the first two as to how it reacts. Now let's take a quick look at properties. Uh, we'll take the elasticity down to zero. And you will notice it's a different bounce. We take that back up to 100. And again, quite a bit different bounce. So that is just what it says it is, how it interacts with whatever physics enabled object there is. 100 means it's going to bounce more than 1. I believe 30 was the default setting. 
Dampening slows these things down. Dampening will give you a little more control. Sometimes it'll give you too much control. Dampening can even actually bring a simulation to a halt if you use too much. The dampening is something that's just, just what it says it is. It dampens it. It slows it down. Friction, if you want something to slide, then you cut the friction to zero. And again, if we were using a, a plane that, uh, that was on an incline and both were set to zero, it'd be kind of like sliding on ice. Now, mass, that, of course, that isn't, that's not important until you get to where you're actually knocking something down or interacting with two objects that the mass is important on, such as uh, knocking down a wall or, or anything like that. Now, of course, we'll go over these settings more in future segments as we need them, as we use them. So right now, we we'll just have this set up where it basically drops. We're going to change that to static, which will hold it in place. Now, if it ever gets to where your physics simulation doesn't react properly, then right-click and remove animation from your physics-enabled uh, objects. And if anything else, that should remove any latent uh, animation. But static will hold it in place. So what I'm going to do now is hold down the control key. I'm going to pull down and I'm going to make a second one. And I'm going to make it dynamic. And then I'm going to add a constraint. In this case, we're going to use a rope constraint. So I'm going to hit plus. I'm going to hit rope. Now, this box is already constrained to the world. But I want to constrain it to this box. So I want the bottom box constrained to the top box. So I'm going to pick target, click on it. Now we have it constrained. And as you can see, we get a different interaction. And this itself is the settings for just the rope. If we want that stiffness to, to change quite a bit, if I can get this in there, then we just dial that down. Now there you just saw something that a lot of people don't catch until they've got their simulation set up. And that is that these things like rope constraints and things, they attach at the pivot point. So in order to keep that from rolling over like that, because it's really attached at the bottom, we want to come to the middle, upper center. And now it's attached to the top. We could come over here to the back on the side and as you can see, it changes the point to where it's attached. So we'll come back to middle. Middle of the middle. And now once again, we're attached. Now I'm going to remove the infinite plane for right now. And now you can see a little bit more of how these things are interacting with each other. Quite a few uses just for this. If you're going to swing something around, uh, even a character, swinging off a ledge or something, you just place your dummies. Don't worry about where the rope's at, because once you uh, press the play button, that'll take care of itself. Now, another thing to remember is when you're moving this, that is also going to change the type of interaction that you have. So if you do want to use a something like to batter down a wall, you were, or to go from ledge to ledge, you definitely want it to swing. On the other hand, if you were going to do a gallows, you would just want it to drop, or even a guillotine. And I'm sure there's probably better uses for it than that. Okay, let's load the infinite plane back. And let's go ahead and move our segments up. Our blocks. Move them up to give us a little bit of room. And let's see what we have. Alright. Now I want this to kind of be a battering ram type of thing. So going to move it back like this, let it swing into place, and 
And we're going to use it like a battering ram. Or I guess you'd say more like a wrecking ball. So, let's go back and grab some blocks. Some boxes. I am going to physics enable it. I am going to set it as frozen. Then I'm going to use multi-duplicate to duplicate it and stack it. We don't want these gaps to be too high or depending on the setting that you have, the type that it is, it may actually bounce off each other and bounce the stack down. So we'll just set these and I'm going to add some more. Now those are all physics enabled because this one was to begin with. And this, of course, will change depending on the mass of this object and other things. Also, depending on how much swing it has. So what you're seeing here is just a basic physics setup, a basic simulation. So this has some limited practical use, but it does have some use. Now, we're not going to get into saving this stuff right now. That'll be for, for future segments and things. So this is just a basic setup showing you how physics interacts with each other with a constraint.